Are you struggling to boost your sales? Do you find it difficult to convince your customer? Is it challenging for you to persuade your team to improve their performance? Well, this is a problem of selling. Let's explore this on Intricate Chats 3 with Swaps. I'm your host, Swapni Sebastian, business consultant and trainer. To know more about me and the training services I provide, you can click the LinkedIn below given in the description box. Thank you so much for joining me today. And today we have somebody to explore the idea of sales. Now, when I talk about sales, we have not just selling products and services, we also have selling of ideas and also selling of yourself. So to explore this, we have Sam Satish Ebenezer joining us from Houston, Texas, United States. And he'll tell us more about five ideas that he uses to improve his sales. Privilege to have Sam Satish Ebenezer joining us. He is the Chief Operations Officer of Green City Recycler and he will let us know more about his company and what he does. So first of all, uh, Satish, thank you for joining us on Intricate Chats 3. Please let us know uh, something about your company and what you do there. Hi, Satish. I thank you. Uh, so Green City it's a textile recycling company. Maybe uh, it's something that's different um, to many folks. So your listeners, textile recycling uh, is basically taking clothing, any kind of textiles that have been used and repurposing them to, uh, to create uh, different products. So basically, so you have your denim jeans. What we do is we separate denim jeans. Um, we shred out the fiber. Um, which can be recycled to make uh, insulation behind drywalls. Uh, so uh, another example of where textiles are re recycled or reused is uh, there, there are a lot of felts that are uh, used in cars at the, uh, with, between the doors. Uh, those are made from uh, recycled clothing. So my company basically collects grades and resells uh, large quantities of clothing. I've been here, I've been, I, I pretty much founded the company um, from investors. So that's where my first uh, concept of sales comes in because I had to sell the idea to a group of investors, right? For them to catch on to say why they wanted to be uh, a part of this uh, industry, which is, you know, uh, very innovative. We, we all know that green and environmentally friendly companies are uh, uh, like the cliche or the word of, of the current uh, environment. Everybody wants to be sustainable. Uh, sustainability is like the cool word. Uh, so that's, that's, that's where I had to uh, sell myself to have this bunch of investors who said, hey, you know, let's get this guy some money so we can uh, uh, start a business that is, you know, financially viable. Uh, and also, you, you know, you're recycling something and, uh, and why not make some money out of it? Um, that is simply so fantastic, all... uh, Sam, to know more about your company and the role that you have now. The very important question that most of us have is, is selling limited to people in the sales profession or are we all in the area of uh, selling in some form or the other? Sales happens in everyday life. I, I did not, uh, I didn't learn to be a salesman. I, you know, I didn't go to school to be, uh, learn how to sell, but I had to teach myself, right? And, and, and sales is not my only thing. I do sales is just one drop of the many things I do at work. Interesting note that Sam is also an athlete and is involved in soccer. And what he told me during uh, an informal conversation is that he uses lessons that he learned from sport and applies them in the area of sales at his workplace. So Sam, over to you to discuss those five awesome tips that you have to boost our sales Success is never the last thing. Success doesn't mean, oh, I can stop right now. Success is not the final. At the same time, failure is not the final. I mean, once you fail, it doesn't mean I have to give up. You know, um, success means uh, you can win today. You can win a championship today or this season, 
but how do we do it next season, right? Like that's what success is. Success has to be sustained. And that's what I encourage my sales team to say, okay, you got five accounts this week. Now what do I do to get five more next week? How do I motivate myself uh, to get that? So success doesn't mean, success doesn't stop. Success has to be ongoing. You have to have a mentality within yourself to say success and failure are never final. Um, so here's one thing I'll give you an example for success, right? Oh, like it's very hot in Texas in the summer. It goes to hundred degrees and I'm there cutting my grass sometimes. And I, Oh yeah, I cut my grass. I did a great job, right? Guess what? 10 days later, that grass is going to cut, grow, grow. And I have to get back out there in the heat and cut it. So that's what success is. Success doesn't mean I cut it once and I leave and I can leave it. No, it, to have a nice yard, you have to consistently work hard to, to go out in the heat to cut it, right? When you're a company, don't just go out there to compete. Like if you're going to make a sales pitch, just, just don't go out there to just compete in the environment. Dominate it. Like great teams dominate matches and great salesperson should dominate the arena. Take Apple, for example. They don't just make products to compete in a market they make products to dominate in the market so that's what is very that's important to dominate what you're going don't go to offer your client say hey you know i have a sales strategy that i'm going to do something that's better don't don't sell something that's better sell something or make a sales pitch that will dominate your 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 product in the market um that domination is uh, dominate your sales and dominate your presence. Even if you're making a, 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 a sales presentation, right? Like make an impression where it's not just, oh, it's a sales presentation, right? But like dominate your presence there. Like make your presence felt uh, when you do that. Invest your time to getting to know your customer. Most of the times, you know, clients will give you the sale not because they like your product, but sometimes it's purely because they like you as a person, right? Like they, they, they think, oh, this guy has done his homework. This guy has taken his time to understand me uh, and, and what I'm looking for. So spend your time to do uh, the extra work to understand your client much better than, than trying to invest uh, in, in, in to, to sell to your client your product. Understand them first, then the product will sell itself to them. And this is one of my favorites. Um, be relentless, like never give up, <clears throat> never back down. Um, don't, don't quit till you make a sale. If you have a set number of goals, do that's bare minimum. Hey, if, if I have a sales target of 10 accounts this week, it's a bare minimum. Hey, why do I go more than 10? And once you hit 10, don't quit. Don't say, oh, I, I've done 10 this week. I've hit my target. I can go home. No, be relentless. See how you can get the 11th sale. See how you can get the 12th sale. Everybody or every person has to take, uh, <clears throat> have to, be relentlessly attack some 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 sales goals, right? Like when when you are relentless, when 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 you when you when you're sitting down, let's say you're trying to make a phone call to make a sale, you you sh you should be tenacious. You should have you know you should have the confidence that your 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 when you're making your presentation, like don't allow. Uh, <clears throat> Don't take no for, for an answer, right? Find a way to convert your no to a yes. What can we do to, to make you uh, like our product or like our service? Uh, that's one thing I, I really, really uh, hit upon is being relentless, like not giving up. Uh, <clears throat> and, I, and, I tell my, uh, and I tell my sons the same thing, like if he plays soccer, so it's like, if you're in a good position and somebody didn't pass you the ball, why set out? Tell them why that, why you were, why you should have given the pass. Um, so that's like, don't take no for an answer.
uh, and never quit. Um, and my last point is have the right priorities, right? Uh, here's, here's one thing. A lot of us like to fish. Um, it's easy to fish for bass in the pond, but I say go catch the whale. Whaling is a lot more difficult, but at the end, whaling gives you more money or more success, and it gives you more happiness. So anybody can go to, to a pond and <clears throat> catch a bass, right? Most people can't, but you can't go catch a whale. So set your priorities. Don't go after the small fish. Go after the big fish. Uh, <clears throat> that way, you know you have larger targets and higher aims in life. Uh, those are those are my five points. That was uh, fantastic, we Sam. We've had five really good tips, and you've explained it with a few illustrations as well. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we also have some questions for you, Sam Postis, uh, for us to explore some ideas uh, uh, a little more in detail. So one of the challenges I hear from a lot of people that I work with in the area of sales is that they struggle with a no when it comes to sales. A no from a customer, a no from a client seems to put a lot of them down. Uh, how do you deal with that no and how do you proceed uh, when you get a no from a customer? I always tell myself when somebody's saying no, I don't take that personal. I don't think they think they're saying it no to me but they say no to the product or the service, right? So I have taught myself to say, you know, okay, they said no, but that's not, that's not because they don't like me. It's because they don't like the product or service. So what can I do to earn their trust uh, in me? And so that I can tell, like, <clears throat> you know, like back in the day, you'll say, hey, I like this product. It's a good product, right? So and, and if they earn my trust, they'll buy the product. Uh, that's what I try to do. Uh, do Sam, one salespeople get undue credit for what they do, and uh, in comparison to people from operations or from other areas of work, uh, do you think the sales people uh, tend to achieve a lot more from an organizational perspective? What's your take on that? I mean, there are there, you know there are certainly great salespeople out there. Uh, uh, like you said, I cannot think of one at the top of my head, uh, but uh, without sales, you don't sell anything. And without, without selling anything, you don't make money. Uh, <clears throat> so I see, I see my sales guys as a very important part of my team. Uh, and I tell them like, look, I can have all these guys doing behind the work. Uh, you know, they come, they drive the trucks. They, they do this process, they separate, they segregate, they grade. <clears throat> yeah, that's all redundant work, right? I, and you can teach anybody to do that, right? But it's very hard to teach somebody to sell a product because it's not the same. Every day is different. Every client is different. So I think salespeople definitely need credit for whatever work they do. Uh, so I, I would say value your sales team members. Well, fantastic. That was a very interesting perspective, although I think a lot of people from uh, operations would be offended. But people, the truth is Sam manages both operations and sales for his company. So uh, he knows what he's talking about. And I think the perspective he's taking is sales is a very important part of most businesses. I don't know, maybe they're better at selling themselves and getting on top. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, pe people, when you're in sales, you have to think innovatively because you're put in environments where sometimes you get questions that you don't know. Uh, and then I think sales also is a point where you have a direct connection with your client, your customer, the guys in operations or in uh, design department may not have direct interaction with your clients. So maybe clients know you uh, much better because if you take my company, every single client would know Sam, but they may not know who the owner or, or, or the vice president is. You know what I mean? Uh, so you have a direct connection to your client. Uh, so 
and, and, and that's, I enjoy something working with people. You have to enjoy working with people. Uh, and, and you know, sales is like, sales I say is like, <clears throat> have you ever seen like a mime, right? Like a mime is somebody who, who is very, his expressions are just sales like that. You can have a bad day, but you cannot take it out on a client. You have to walk in and still present to your client and be yourself uh, just as a normal business person. So you have to have a, a tough and strong mentality You, you have to understand uh, there are different aspects of a sales team, right? One is uh, some people take it very, very personal when you get up, in, up front of them. Some people are very mellow. Um, so working with a different uh, base or a team of uh, sales folks, you have to understand what works for them motivation on one person does not work on a different person. So you have to understand your team and plan your way you deliver your message uh, uh, based on the team that you have. So uh, Sam, thank you so much for joining in today and giving us these five awesome tips for us to be able to uh, work with ourselves during this time. And one last question that we have during this time is how do you uh, manage, how are you managing your virtual team uh, effectively during this time of the lockdown and the pandemic? Sometimes, you know, I don't like right now, we don't even see each other. Uh, we're only communicating uh, their, you know, video, right? So I have to understand what they're going through. I, I don't see them physically. So I'm not sure what their their day is or how how their environment is so you have to like adapt to ways uh to train so what i do is before i start a meeting i have a casual conversation with them before we even get to business uh to see how how their day was i mean i don't know if their kid is at home sick and she's in the next room um so have a great relationship with your team uh to know uh, how they how how they're doing uh, on the day, and also you know if they're not having those uh, goals, uh, if they're not hitting those goals, you know have a conversation with them. Like how can how can you help them achieve those goals? Then like hey, I want these goals by Friday, but ask them what can we do as a team to help them achieve those goals. Uh, so as an organization, you're moving forward. Thank you very much, uh, Sam, for this wonderful answer. And uh, I hope it will enrich all our viewers. Viewers, thank you for uh, staying on for this. And, and for those of you who are interested in knowing more about recycling, we have some more data from. So we've all known recycling, but the concept of how do we take, uh, just like, like you would have had clothes, you probably passed it down to your brothers or your nephews or your cousins, or you gave it to somebody. Uh, but textile recycling takes that to a whole new level where it, you know, you have to find ways, not just pass it on, but what do you do with the bad stuff? Like there must be some t-shirts that's torn. How do you repurpose that? Um, so that's how I got into the industry. Um, and we built a, a, a group of customers, clients, where we source the clothing and also find customers to resell the clothing, right? Um, so every single uh, product that goes out of our warehouse is quality tested. So our customers know they're buying from some of the best products coming out of the United States. Sam, thank you for sharing your valuable tips. Uh, and audience, thank you for staying with us during this time. It's been a privilege hosting you again. And until next time when we have another show with more value, thank you so much. And I wish you all a happy and a prosperous 2021. Thank you so much. See you soon.